we are on the boat room. It gives me great pleasure to say that we have uh, reached our second season of our show. You guys gave so much love to the first season that we are now back with the banging second season. This is a show where we have guests from all kind of fields, from films to sports to businesses. But we don't talk about their profession, we talk about everything beyond that. Today we have with us an entrepreneur we all know very well. Over the past three decades, he has transformed a traditional commodities-driven business into a leading consumer products and services company. There aren't many people in India who don't know about Sapola cooking oil or parachute coconut oil. Let's meet the man behind it all. We have with us today Mr. Harsh Mariwala, the founder and chairman of Mariko. It's such a pleasure to have you on Forbes India Beyond the Boardroom, sir. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you, Ushnata. And thank you, my pleasure to, to be on this show. First, first time for me, so I hope uh, first time is lucky. So to begin with, your new book is out. It's called Harsh Realities. Uh, what can the readers who are yet to read it expect to know about you from the book? We started by saying that, I started by saying that it should be for entrepreneurs, you know, who want to scale up. But as the book has turned out and whenever I given the book to anybody, it has evoked a very positive response. So now I am saying that the, my target has shifted from being entrepreneurs to professionals, to students and also to uh, housewives, anybody else who is interested in life because it has uh, a lot of lessons. You had also, also mentioned uh, that you were apparently rejected by the business schools that you had applied to in India after graduating in commerce from Sydenham College in Bombay. Yeah, so you know, I was good at a student, as a student, but not the best in terms of the topping the list, you know. So to that extent, uh, my chances of getting into a management school were, were lesser because I was not topping the, the class. And I was also very shy as a person, you know. And there were group discussions uh, before admitting. So I may not have done as well. But there were only two or three colleges at that time, you know, Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, Calcutta, and Bajaj School of Management. Uh, so I was a bit disappointed. Uh, my father didn't allow me to go abroad to study. And I was put into <laughs> the Bombay oil industry at that time, the family managed organization. Yeah. And uh, I think looking back, it was a good decision my father took. I don't know why he didn't allow me, <laughs> but uh, I'm glad I, I didn't study MBA because I have learned it through experience, through actually learning, through on-the-job learning. And I think that's played a very important role in my own journey. And what can you tell us about the background behind the name Mariwala? I think that's also an interesting story. Yeah, so uh, originally the surname of uh, our family was uh, Merchants, but my grandfather uh, started a trade in black pepper and uh, he became big in, in the black pepper trade and uh, uh, in, in Gujarati black pepper is Mari. So, and Wala is somebody who was dealing in Mari. So that's how the name Mariwala came in because we were trading in, in black pepper. And uh, the name, the surname changed from the uh, merchant to Mariwala. You grew up in this huge joint family. So how is yes. it living and being brought up in this one big kachi family? So we had our own building. In fact, I mean, I have not written in the book, but I was born in that family house. I was not born in a hospital. It's a four-story building and we have, uh, within the family, we have almost uh, three and a half uh, floors. So each, uh, we were all staying together, one common kitchen, about 25, 30 people. Uh, so first the kids would just sit for dinner and then the elders would sit for dinner. Right. So a lot of, uh, you know, doing things jointly and meeting and, you know, before dinner, after dinner, sitting down, common interests, Indian classical music. Uh, and each of my uncles or my father were pursuing some physical games, so golf, riding, sailing. So I was exposed to a lot of shall I say, diverse uh, interests uh, which were there in the family and then uh, and sit with the family, they would discuss, uh, they were all in the business, so they would discuss business issues at home. So I was exposed a lot in my younger days to, to business because of the business discussions. Which are the uh, countries that you always go back to because you love it so much? So I like hills, you know, and uh, enjoy in small towns. So countries like uh, Austria, Switzerland. Right. Right. Even English, Brit British countryside is very beautiful. Yeah. But I've been to many, many countries. You know, I must have been to at least 50 different countries. You know. So, what kind of a traveler are you? Uh, I I like good surroundings, and you know, I like to exercise a lot. So, I 
uh, first thing i check out is is the hotel does it have a good gym you know wow uh, yeah. <laughs> i exercise one and a half two hours a day every day without fail yeah. really so gym yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah even now so now actually it's increased more in pandemics not two hours a day think, so it's worked out well you know i, I do a combination of of physical exercise like walking swimming yoga uh, gym and on weekends i enjoy playing golf so normally on my holidays also ideally speaking there should be a golf course nearby so that i can play a few rounds so also recently you made a, a big revelation uh, i think during the release of your book that there was a time when hul actually uh, made a call to you and wanted to buy off mariko tell us about that time and how did you handle uh, such a thing we got listed in 1996 and at that time levers uh, had acquired tata oil mills company and as a part of the acquisition they got this tata nihar brand so they were uh, they had gone public saying that uh, we will actually have a big will give a big jolt to parachute and i mean they wanted to create a fear wanted to buy us over so there was a lot of fear at our end and uh, in terms of what should we be doing i do business because i want to give a certain legacy i want to have continuity in business and money beyond a point it doesn't just me you know yeah uh, so i was very keen that you know this is a business i know myself and why should i sell off i went to and the bottom it karsan bhai patel to get an idea because they were also fighting rivers and came to the conclusion that we will not sell them the business they were very keen to buy it so we decided to take them on and that happened over a period of one or two years they had multiple launches they gained some market share but not at our cost so at some stage after 3 4 years they started losing interest in that category and they decided to sell that brand and i thought they would give it to us uh, on a platter but uh, i think they were smart they said okay we'll auction the brand and there were uh, five uh, bidders for that brand all the indian fmcg companies and we said that we have to acquire this brand it's very important uh, not just for the ego but it's, it's a very good fit for us because we know this business that brand was literally doing well in the east and it would complement us uh, because we were not as strong in the east so i think that acquisition happened we we did much much more than others but looking back it has been one of the best acquisitions because it has uh, paid rich dividends in terms of profits and after a lot of uh, deliberation you finally joined instagram so how has yes. that instagram experience been so far so it's just just beginning I, I was told that my wife was just seeing that and say, "My God, you got almost thousand followers, and I'm on Instagram for last so many years, and I don't have maybe hundred or two hundred followers." You know. So, what are the kind of books you read? And if you have to, for our readers, uh, list out three of your all-time favorite books that they must read <laughs> once weekly. Some of the books which have appealed to me, uh, which have reinforced my own thinking, are books on execution written by Ram Charan and Larry Bossetti. a uh, book on uh, blue ocean strategy because that's something which appealed to me a lot a uh, book uh, written on grit uh, which was i read about few years back so that's also appealed to me um one other book which has appealed to me is uh, uh firms of endearment which talks about the purpose of an organization why an organization exists yeah lastly sir uh, please give some advice to all those young entrepreneurs out there today so i would say that you know in a, it's a highly competitive work environment and if you want to start a new business or if you want to continue doing well in your existing business you have to continuously identify what will work with the consumer so consumer inside consumer <coughs> connect is very very important so combine that pioneering innovation with very very good quality talent and create a culture uh, which will make them flourish thank you so much mr mariwala for joining us it was such a pleasure talking to you so many new uh, different uh, facets about your life the viewers got to know they can know even more in the book but thank you so much for coming on ashu sir it's a thank pleasure. you thank you